In the presence of the Most High, um, Yahweh Shem Mashiach Yahweh Shabbat Shalom. So everyone here, I pray all is well with you and the, the Mashmakah the family. We're just gonna get right into it, man. Again, we know that we are in perilous times. However, we have a great day uh, before us, and we should act accordingly before the Heavenly Father. When you know this, you know, a lot of people are in torment. A lot of people are living their lives uh, with a lot of stress, anxiety, and they don't know what to do. But Yasha Allah, the righteous remnant, it should not be so with us. Well, not one of these prophecies is going to fail. So I'm going to read uh, from the Baruch, the book of Baruch 4, and I just want to go to verse uh, 32 real quick before we get into the lesson. All right. Baruch chapter 4, verse 32, and that's in the Apocrypha. And it reads, Miserable are the cities which thy children serve. Miserable is she that received thy sons. So we're starting to see this misery fall on America. All this, this chaos, everything that you see in the news, uh, when you're seeing, you know, civil war is at the at the brink right now. You got angry fractions uh, that are dissatisfied inside the United States. Within within this United States, people are now disenfranchised. I'm talking about American citizens, so-called Europeans. They are disenfranchised and they're dissatisfied with how government is uh, moving forward. And so we see this civil unrest, man. We see all these fascists. You got groups that don't even believe uh, really in any form of government. You got certain groups that want to start their own government, you know, holding the American flag. Of course, you have uh, the Black Panther Party. Uh, you have uh, these the Huey Newton gun clubs. You have all these people, you, you have the, uh, well, the new Black Panther Party. So you, you see an insurgent of civil unrest and insurrection. But for us that are in the know, this is supposed to happen. That's right. The chaos is supposed to happen. Everything that we see out, out in the streets now and that's taking place should not be something that catches us by surprise. What do I mean? Even the pandemic, we know that Yahweh Shah said, Matthew uh, 24. That's right. He said that these things were going to happen. He said that there were going to be plagues. He said all these things. So if you trust in Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, why are you dismayed? Like I said, we should have the attitude of rejoicing right now. Right. We, our salvation is drawing nigh That's right. with each, uh, each witness, because what's happening in the earth is a witness. What's going on now, it testifies to the truth of the Bible. It's testifying to the truth of who we are as a people. So let me continue. Miserable are the cities which thy children serve. Miserable is she that received thy sons. Then America received the sons of the living power. That's right. Mm -hmm. Which are the children of Israel. The Negroes, and the Latinos, and those uh, that are spread all across the earth of indigenous descent. So we see that miserable are the cities which thy children serve. Miserable is she that received thy sons. Verse 33, for as she rejoiced at thy ruin. And when you think about how America has rejoiced at our ruin, when they lynched our ancestors on trees, when they brought us over here to work for nothing, when, they, when we're still not indemnified, and we still experience social injustice as it is today. We're still fighting the same struggles for justice and peace. The cries are the same. The tears are the same. It's from the time they brought us over here. All right? For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. So, again, Galatians 6, 7, as a man sows, that shall you reap. We're so busy looking at individualism 
that we don't see the view of the Heavenly Father. He's the great and terrible power whose name is set apart. He's the one that sits high and looks low. So his view is just a, it's a larger scale in terms of what's happening. And we need to see from that viewpoint. Huh? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall. Remember the pictures and, and what we still see uh, today. And Elder's got uh, you know, a wonderful book. What's the name of that book? Uh, you got coming out on say can you see yeah con, con, con. Yeah. yeah I know you're gonna show a little bit of that but I want to put that up on the screen but yeah powerful you got an actual infomercial and it's powerful about all the injustices all the Tulsa Oklahoma's all the uh, terrorist acts that took place uh, against our people in this nation and they've been swept under the rug conveniently right but the most high is not gonna forget all right and neither should you for as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. America is getting ready to be desolate. Right. America is getting ready to be desolate. The streets of America are going to be bathed with the blood of the colonizers, and the, this place is going to be desolate. But I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude. Now, you remember how she rejoiced, how America rejoiced. Oh, say can you see. They were rejoicing, singing all these songs. That's right. We see while we were building this nation for them, they were sitting back and enjoying uh, these holidays that we call holidays. Christmas, New Year's. We were slaves when all these things were instituted. That's right. We we should not have any relationship with their celebrations, but as they rejoiced, and now they got you singing their songs. Mm -hmm. Now they got you celebrating their uh, rejoicing. You're, you're rejoicing with your oppressor, and they're rejoicing, they're having a party on you. <laughs> and they've had a party on us. Right. And then you join in on the party. Right. What, what sense does that make, <laughs> you know, concerning our people? We got a lot of waking up to do, all right? For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. American pride. The most prideful nation there is. The most prideful nation to go into other people's territories, to steal, kill, and destroy, to take the indigenous people off the land and relegate them to a very small area when all the land is theirs. Man, isn't that prideful? To come into your house, Rape your wife, mm -hmm. murder your children, that's right, that's right, and then promise you, well, we'll give you some of the land back, and then don't even make good on that promise. Mm -hmm. Right. What what pride? Mm -hmm. What pride is to bring a people over here from the shores of the west coast of Africa and to bring us over here, make them work for free, and in our face indemnify other people like the so-called Japanese mm -hmm. and give them reparations. Irish. The so-called Irish. That's right. That's right. And I say so-called because we were the original of all these right. people. Mm -hmm. That's right. The so-called Jews. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, why do you think, look, don't get it mistaken, Jewish and Irish, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> same thing, man. Yeah. Something pertaining to. Yeah. Yeah. All right? Yeah. You know, we ruled Europe over a thousand years, and this cave dweller was in the caves for over a thousand. That's right. That's right. You know, all right? So, for I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. She's going to start to mourn. And we see this morning, man. You know, you you got stuff. This is coming out of uh, the final call. They say a new civil war, can it be averted? <laughs> Hell no. Oh, it ain't going to be averted. <laughs> civil war is is here. It's another it's enough. We saw it live in concert. That's right. Yeah. Storming <laughs> the Capitol building. That's right. That's civil war. All right. Um, all, praise. all praises. Let's read on. 33. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting. 35. The 35. Salah. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting, long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. Uh -huh. So that's dealing with destruction, man. That's right. Destruction is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Verse 36. O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east. And behold, the joy that cometh into the, unto thee from the Most High. And that's why I say we always have to acknowledge him as the great and terrible power whose name is set apart. 
who delivered us from the land of Egypt mm -hmm. because he delivered us with a stretched out hand. I was just doing some meditating mm -hmm. and in my meditation, in my studies, I said everything the Heavenly Father, it, it just came upon me. Everything that he does is for a purpose. There's no coincidence. There's no chance. You know, everything's perfect. Even our makeup and how he made us. I just thought about, we got five fingers. You think about the five first five books, which is the law. What do you do with your hands? Put your hands on the law. You put your hands, and when you go to do something, mm -hmm. you do it with your hands. Now, when you you put both your hands together, and then you look at it, that's and you got ten fingers and ten toes. And then I was thinking about Deuteronomy is the fifth book, and you go to Deuteronomy ten and twenty, and what does it say? Let's go there. You think about it. This has to do with what we do. He even made our hands to do his will. You didn't make your hands because you might have put six on there. You might have put eight. I need more fingers. My fingers need to be longer. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I want to be able to hold a basketball. Somebody just go to the back. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 20. Thou shalt fear the most high thy power. Come on. Him shalt thou serve. Him shalt thou what? Serve. Now what, how do you serve? What, serve with, with, your hands. with your hands. When you bring something to somebody, you do it with your what? Your feet. You, you see what I'm saying? Them shall, and I thought about that. I said, man, do the one to take. I got, these hands are to serve the most high. He gave us one mouth. You know why he gave us one mouth? I just, it, I just thought about it. He gave us one mouth so we would understand what it is to just hear him and just to speak what he tells us. He gave us one mouth because what we need to be speaking is what he says, mm -hmm. not our own ways. But he gave us these hands to serve him with. Your whole body, your whole existence, everything about you is purposeful in the most high. And look how many of us go around and do what we want to do with what he created. Who are we to tell him our purpose? You didn't make yourself. You might have made yourself a little different. All right, come on. And to him shall thou cleave. Cleave. How do you cleave to something, even physically? With your hands. With your arms. This is the purpose for your whole makeup. It's not to dribble a basketball. It's not to run up and down on a football field. It's not to do what you want. And that's why I say, if you, we really got to get to a place where we see the importance of not breaking the Sabbath. Because now you're taking the instruments that he's giving you and you're doing something against what your purpose was for. Read it again from the top. Thou shalt fear Yahweh thy power, him shalt thou serve. You should just serve him. That's your job. Come on. And to him shalt thou cleave. That, that's your job. That's what you're supposed to do with your physical attributes. Come on. And swear by his name. And swear by his name. And so you're supposed to be an example. We know in Romans 12 and 1 that living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Living sacrifice. Living sacrifice. So as long as you're living, everything that's about you is a sacrifice unto him. So we're going to get into a little little bit of that. Give me the book of, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, um, <clears throat> like, number seven is complete, you know, which is a seven days. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And if we look at our facial uh, makeup, we have seven holes. A mouth, two in the nose, two in the eyes, two ears. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And that's to look upon him. And a, a lot of reason why we don't experience rest in our life because we're not resting on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't have rest. That's why it's no term. He said he'll keep you in perfect peace whose minds are stayed on him. That's right. How's your mind stayed on him? Just thinking about him? Mm. I don't think about him. Oh, my mind is on Your mind is stayed on him when you're doing what he's asked you to do. That's right. All right? So you don't have rest because you're not resting. Give me, uh, give me what, uh, read what you got, and then uh, give me uh, the Sabbath uh, was made for man. Okay. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, and this is verse 32. 
And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him to Moses and Aaron unto all the congregation. And they put him inward because it was not declared what should be done to him. And the Most High said unto Moses, the man shall be surely put to death and all the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. That's how important the Sabbath was. That's how important the Sabbath was to the Most High. All right. And he created the Sabbath. Let's see what he created the Sabbath for. Uh, it's uh, Mark 2 27 and then you, you wonder why your your house is in turmoil you wonder why your physical makeup is in turmoil because we, we break in the Sabbath you're not going to have no rest do you know your mental stability is connected on you keeping the Sabbath your physical health is connected to you keeping the Sabbath you, you can't, because you that know to keep the Sabbath, when you break it, you don't feel right. Right. Your spirit, not if you're connected to the Most High. Mm -hmm. you, you can't, mm -hmm. unless you're just giving over to an evil spirit. You, you feel some about you say, man, I know I ain't supposed to be doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this ain't right. Right. Come on. This is Exodus 31 and 15. It says, six days may work be done. But in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. It's the Sabbath of what? Rest. The Most High never asks you to do something just for. Uh, let me let me uh, be politically general correct. Just yeah. General purposes, but doo doo and giggles. <laughs> All right, let me say that. <laughs> but doo doo and giggles. He never tells you to do something but doo doo and giggles. And a lot of our people act like the instruction of the Most High is something optional. Mm. Now we're talking about a great power. We're talking about the power that delivered us out of the land of Egypt through death, destruction, mayhem, chaos. It was chaotic in ancient Egypt. All right? It was chaotic. I know we were supposed to be going over the laws, but it was just something that was placed on my spirit I wanted to uh, you know, bring before y'all today. So, um, what was that? Exodus 31. Fifteen. Six days shall work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, set apart to the Most High. Whosoever doeth any work Come on. in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Now, again, we know that death can be slow. They say death is better than a continual sickness. All right, so death can be slow. It don't have to be fast, but you're slowly dying anyway. You're dying when you break the Sabbath because it's a Sabbath of rest. And that's why we don't get rest. Most I put this in my spirit, why we're not resting. Because people are not keeping the Sabbath correctly. When you keep the Sabbath correctly, you're gonna rest. He says, serve him with all your heart, your mind, and soul. Guess what's gonna rest? Your heart, your mind, and soul. When you serve him completely. You, nobody can tell me that they're breaking the Sabbath and you got rest, that you're at peace. You're not. You're not. It's something that can be better than what you're experiencing. I know that for a fact. Because he made promises concerning the Sabbath. Come on. Verse 16. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Ooh, the covenant is also the covenant of peace. Because you got a lot of Israelites that are like bugging out now. You got you got a bug out bandwagon going on. They don't have no peace, man. They're like, I'm an Israelite. I know I'm an Israelite, but I'm, I'm struggling just like the heathen. I need to see a shrink. You know? Uh, you might know it somewhere it's an Israelite that's, that's seeing a psychiatrist. It should be that way. We serve this great power. All things are possible, right? We're more than conquerors, right? Great as he is, he is in the world. Well, the first thing we do, run to the doctor. Why do you think you gotta run to the doctor? Could it be because you're not in the covenant of peace? And your body's not at rest? 
because you won't do what he said. I know this, this ain't the favorite message that you want to hear today. Bring it up. But but for us to experience him and to make declarations and claims and have not had that experience, you you're a liar. You're a liar. And you and you're a hypocrite. And the most I hates liars and hypocrites. Come on. Verse 16. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. The children of Israel. Man, that's us, right? I thought it was us. Come on. 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. That's a sign. It's like a it's like the fringes that you have on. It's a sign. This is a signet. This is something that lets you know and the whole world that you are in relationship with the great and terrible power whose name is set apart. If that's what it's, it's and you're going to know it. They're going to know it through your covenant of peace. Why are these people rejoicing when all hell is breaking loose? Why are these people, they don't, their countenance is not even changed. Why are they so strong in the midst of all this fire and brimstone? That's because we're in the covenant of peace with the most high. Because your job really ain't going to matter when the most high is bringing destruction on Babylon. Somebody get the back door. Come on. For in six days, Yahweh made heaven and earth. Guess what? You ain't gonna have to work that day. <laughs> when, when the most, when the most, I bring in destruction on battle. I don't care if they told you, you gotta come in. You won't have to work then. All right. Then you have a day off. You all right? Your day. You, you gonna wish you had not gone in before. Come on. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. Right. And rest it, refresh. Give me the, uh, you know what I want, that Mark. The book of Mark, chapter 2. Mark, chapter 2, 27. The Sabbath was, was made for man. Ooh, the Sabbath was made for what? Man. It was meant for you to do. Imagine the most high making something for you. And you don't do it. The Sabbath was made for man. Imagine the Most High making something for you. It reminds me of where He prepared, He's prepared a place for you, and then you're not there when He told you. It reminds me of the Ten Virgins. You see what I'm saying? Matter of fact, Greg, can you? Matthew 25. Let's get that real quick. This, I, I didn't plan this. I had some notes and everything, man. Right? I ain't get to my <laughs> get to my notes. The book of Matthew, chapter twenty-five, and verse one. Mm -hmm. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now the kingdom's supposed to be in us, right? Right. Uh -huh. We're supposed to have that type of faith. But well, a lot of our people lack faith. We do what the enemy tells us to do. We get scared when he tells us to get scared. But guess what? We're not scared when the Most High tells us to do something. It seems a little weird. It seems a little backwards. Things seem a little reverse, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Most High tell you to keep the Sabbath. Your boss tell you to come to work. Yep. Who should you be listening to? Most High. I mean, let's really think about it. Let's think about it. Doesn't that sound a little backwards? Who who do you serve? Who, who, who you supposed to with all your heart, mind, and soul? With, with all your fibers, with all that's within you. The Christians got them songs down pat. But we know they don't do nothing. They don't do it. But they got the songs down pat. They sound good. Them songs sound good. With all that's within me. You know. Yeah. They sound good. <laughs> But we criticize them, we critique them. You can't. We criticize, we critique them, but are we operating like them? I swear, I swear. Come on. Uh, I got Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. 
This is woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You know how powerful that is? And I never heard it like that until you read it as a perfect precept because when you put what man wants you to do over what the Most High wants you to do, you're putting bitter for sweet. You're putting darkness for light. Call the chapter again, verse. Uh, this is Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Okay, read it again. Woe unto them that call evil good. Now stop. You got to be calling evil good when you're doing evil. It's not just saying, because it's evil to break the Sabbath in the eyes of the Most High, isn't it? Okay. That's facts. You call it evil good when you do it. You're saying it's all right. Come on. And good evil. And good evil. I'd rather do this over here, what man tells him, than what the Most High said. Mm -hmm. Now we got a problem. Is man stronger than the most high? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. No. <laughs> it's better to obey the most high than man. Isn't that the scripture? Somebody want to pull that? Let's <laughs> since we pull the scriptures, let's pull that. Let's get that one. <laughs> no, what are they, what are they both done? you get it open, are you? We got a lot of other scriptures we're gonna pull. <laughs> but let's pull that one. <laughs> Yeah, the priest is absolutely correct. You know, our people, that's a, it's sad too, man. You know, um, you know, our people, the, the most logical answer that, you know, you can ask our people today, you know, if you ask them for some kind of understanding on a certain situation, and nine times out of 10, probably nine and a half times out of 10, the answer that you're gonna get is they're gonna su summarize it as up as, do what makes you feel good. You know, that's the thing that they say, well, just do what just makes you feel happy or good. Look, what makes me feel happy is I can go around the neighborhood murdering people all damn day long. But you got to ask yourself, is it right? <clears throat> is it right? I can, what makes me feel good, I can be a heroin addict and shooting heroin in my arm. That makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. But you got to ask yourself at the end of the day, is it right? And the ultimate question you got to ask yourself, how you critique your life, like Priest is saying, is the way that you're going about life, is it right with the Most High? That's the ultimate question right there. Whatever you do in life, okay, you gotta ask yourself, and when you look at yourself in the mirror in the morning, am I living right with the Most High? That's what you gotta ask yourself. That's right. And it's simple because the instructions are there. Right. So grab the ax, who got it? I read, I read, I read. Man, usually y'all quick with the what's, what's going on? Acts chapter five, verse That's twenty-nine. One. Wait, yeah. Wait a second. Hold on. Before we go any further, usually y'all pulling the precepts, but I can finish my speech. But for some reason today, it's it's a little slow down. Go ahead. Book of Acts chapter five, verse twenty-nine. Come on. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said. We ought to obey the Most High rather than men. We need to think about that. We ought to obey the Most High rather than man. Come on. Precept, Job 27, verse 8. For what is the hope of the hypocrite? Mm -hmm. Though he have gained, when the Most High taketh away his soul. You, you see, and that's where it goes into, don't fear that which can kill the body. That's right. You know, but that which can kill the soul. You, you got to be very careful of that. Because you better off lying to the heathen. Yeah, I, I broke my leg. I can't, I can't make it. <laughs> hey, get somebody to make you a cast. You better off. <laughs> you better off. I'm laughing, but you better off doing that than breaking what you know. Yeah. You better off find a way to I, I understand. We are the most high. He's better than me. The most high understand that you gotta work. He know what you have need of. That's right. Doc. He know what you have need of. That's he right. know you gotta eat. You ain't gotta tell him. Uh, he, I gotta eat. I gotta provide. He knows that. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. We're gonna go into this, uh, but let's get this, and, and then we. Go, I want to show you something. We. I'm just gonna make this thing. We don't have time to try to negotiate no commandments mm. at this time, at this stage in the game. 
Y'all see what's going on. You ain't got no time to negotiate no command. That's the last thing you need to be negotiating. You need to be working on your soul salvation and doing better. Not work trying to work it out and reason with something that's written. This etched in the stone. It's written in the stone. Didn't uh, Irwin Five so it's written in the stone. Mm -hmm. It's written in the stone, man. Come on. For what is the hope of the hypocrite? Though he have gained, when the Most High taketh away his soul, mm -hmm. will the Most High hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him? You see, like a woman in travail, he not gonna hear you. Go ahead. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. This is what we're seeing in, in our nation now. You have the foolish, and you have the wise. Which one are you? Go ahead, put your hand up. Oh. I got. I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. And say. Oh, I had a pre-sale. Bring it out. Bring it out. Now they're coming. I see they trickling in. They slowly. <laughs> All right, it's Jeremiah four twenty-two. <laughs> For my people is foolish; they have not known me. There you go. They are. Pre they are what? They are sadist children. Sadist children, man. That means they won't listen. Come on. And they have no. They have none under no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. They have no knowledge. And so we see knowledge is synonymous with what you do, not with what you say. You gotta be doers of the word, not hearers only. And I'm gonna tell you why we have to do it this way. Because our foreparents were so wicked and evil. And that the most high would have destroyed all of us. But he had mercy on us. He had kindness on us. You don't have time to do anything contrary. Now we're gonna see it, Moses prayed twice. He fasted twice. He came with one set of commandments, then he got another one. He turned around, they making a golden calf. How are we any different when we break in these laws? The heavenly father wanted to kill Aaron. He wanted to, he wanted to get rid of all of Israel. And then he told Israel some things. We're going to see it in Deuteronomy 9. He told Israel, he was like, when you get this land, don't think that it's because of your righteousness. Because <laughs> yeah, you won't. Because you won't. <laughs> it was the wickedness. That's why I said when we can't afford to do wrong. Because if, when the Most High breathes, do you know what comes out of his nostrils when, when he breathes? He can breathe war. The most I can breathe when it's smoke, you know, we hear all these things, you want smoke. You don't really want no smoke from the most high. Smoke from the most high is you you out of here. You're done. In his nostrils it is destruction. When he breathes. Come on. I got a precept. Exodus 34, 7. Keeping mercy for thousands. Forgiven iniquity and transgressions and sins, and that will by no means clear the guilty. It's not going to clear you in the day of judgment. All Israel is going to be judged. You know, we like to think about Israel being saved, and that's fine. But you got to think about them going to be judged. Israel going to be judged. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. So we're going through what our forefathers went through. That's why we can't claim that it's our righteousness. What does the scripture say? He says, your righteousness is this filthy rag. You're not here because of what you've done. None of us in here are here because of what we've done. So why repeat what your forefathers did to get, and, and you just take advantage of grace and mercy. Why do the same thing they would do? Hell, you've been better off just building a, uh, dancing with a damn golden calf uh, with Aaron in there. And what did he do? He destroyed us. Why would we be intertangled anymore with those practices? We got to think about that. We got to think about that. I said, man, no, we can't. Uh-uh. No, I, I, I'll come up with something, man. 
I, I got the corona. They told me 14 days I can't come in. <laughs> well, I be coughing on the phone rather than go to, to my job. <laughs> All types of uh, being as wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, things you can do. You can say all types of stuff. But one of your brothers already passed away. Say they died again. It don't matter. Let's say they're dead. We got to go. <laughs> After today, I can't come in. That's right. Yeah. Come on. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and the fourth generation. We got to stop the bleeding, beloved. We got to stop this bleeding. And we're not saying to keep these commandments that it's necessarily going to make you righteous. But you can't afford to do nothing else. You can't afford to do nothing else. I hope y'all see that. I hope y'all see. We, can, we really can't afford to do anything else. All right. Read what you got. Okay. We're in Matthew 25. We just finished up verse 2. Uh, I'll read verse 2 one more time. And five of them, which were the virgins, were wise, and five were foolish. Verse 3. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Now think about it. That's heavy. That's heavy, y'all. I want y'all to listen. Took their lamps. You've got lamps. What is the lamp? Light. light. What is the light? The word. The word. What is the word? It's the law. Mm -hmm. you got lamps. We got lamps. Mm -hmm. We got lamps. We got plenty of lamps. A lot of y'all brought some lamps in here, which we got the law. All right. Come on. Stay with me. Come on. Don't get sleepy now. Come on. Get a precept. Come on. Uh, Ezekiel. All right. They flow a little bit better. Come on. Ezekiel 14 and 20. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, save your how thy power, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. Mm. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. So you see, you got to work out your own soul salvation by their right. Now, what's the right? Whose righteousness is it, though? Most high. It's most the most high's righteousness. Right. That's why it's not yours. That's why you can't do what you want. That's why you can't do what you think. Because your righteousness is filthy. Because right. you will reason away. Of doing what is right. Come on. Right. I'm gonna get a precept for the for that light. Proverbs six twenty three. That's right. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. That's right. You were already there, don't you? You got another one? Yeah. I'll Bring it up. Uh, Romans. Let me back. Uh, Romans ten and three. For, for they being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness. And going about to Oh stop that's, that's right. Right. Being ignorant of Whose righteousness Yahweh's righteousness Yahweh's righteousness mm -hmm. He's the one that's right Come on And going about To establish Their own righteousness Establish their own righteousness You want to reason the way And try to negotiate No ain't no negotiating mm -hmm. Negotiate with your boss Not the most high mm -hmm. Go ahead Have not submitted yeah. Themselves yeah. Unto the righteousness Of Yahweh okay. well, There you go that's that's cold. That's a cold cut right there. To establish your own righteousness, because it's the right. That's why it says your righteousness is this filthy rags. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, come on. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But you took no oil. What does it take for the for the lamp to work to burn? Oil. The oil. So you just because you got the law, we got the law, but we ain't got no oil. <clears throat> Obedience is the oil. Doing the word is the oil. You know, a lot of men, you ain't got no oil, you lost your oil, man. Back in the day, we used to say, man, I'm, oil, I'm about to get oiled up. You know what oiled up was? We about to get, about to drink, man. We about to get oiled up. That's what we used to say. But, <laughs> I was the main one. We're about to get oiled up. But a lot of us have lost our oil, man. Our oil is the work. Faith first, but then the work. Faith without the work is dead. Mm. You got no light. You got a lamp. No light. How many people that know the Torah that died not doing the Torah? Mm. Many of our people, man. Most of Israel, man. We can't repeat the same thing, man. 
You can't think of a different outcome? Come on. Verse 4. But the wise took oil in their vessels. Took oil in their vessels. This is you being that living sacrifice. In your vessel. See the vessel. You being the vessel. You being the temple of the living power. Come on. With their lamps. With their lamps. They had it all together. They were keeping the laws, statutes and commandments. The laws that are the most high righteousness. That's right. Come on. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Look, think about this. Imagine you in the Arctic. You got all this wood, but no fire. <laughs> You're going to die around a bunch of trees. <laughs> You got I, I don't mean to laugh, but I seen these survival. I, I like to watch the survival show. Man, they be trying to sometimes you trying to start a fire. Man, make me just want to carry a light around all the time. Yeah, man, I seen them people get out there, man, and they, man, it'd be hours trying to start a fire. Mm. Hours, man. You you gonna want? Imagine you got you got a lamp and you in darkness and you ain't got no oil. You might as well throw that thing away. It ain't going to do you no good. That's how it is when we have the most highest righteousness and we don't do righteousness. Hmm. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made. You see, a lot of times because, you know, a sentence isn't acted upon expeditiously, mm -hmm. then a lot of people say, well, ain't nothing happening to me yet. But it's coming. You, you can you can best believe it's coming. Cause the most high gonna chasten you, and hopefully you you'll receive. Cause this is chastening to some of us, but hopefully you embrace it. You'll love it. You'll embrace it. Cause if you don't, it's just gonna get worse. It's gonna get worse. Come on. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil. Yeah, we we need to we need to we gotta make it in like that precept you just brought out, Yeshua. We gotta make it on your strength. No, no, my brother. What was that old movie? I know y'all ain't gonna remember this. It was a commercial. I think I remember. Because you, 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 <laughs> uh, you ain't the highest in the room, but you're the oldest in the room. No, I'm just playing. You ain't the oldest. You talk but about a commercial and say, you got to get your own. You got to get your own. What commercial? Out. Delphonics album. It was a Delphonics album. Oh, yeah. Back in the day. That go way back. Delphonics. But that commercial, he said, no, my brother, you got to get your own. Yeah. yeah. yeah brother. And that's what it is here. You know, that's why we have to work out our own <laughs> soul salvation. Our own soul salvation. I know one of them probably said, "What was that? One of the Transformers, the Delphonics?" <laughs> <laughs> that was so. That was way back then. That go way back. Yeah. Well, I didn't know Delphonic was a Transformer. No, that's the name of a group. <laughs> oh, praises. And the foolish said unto the wise, "Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out." But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. That's right. You got to do this for yourself, working out your own soul salvation. Come on. That's right. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. It's too late because the door was open. And this is why we prepare. This is why we rehearse. This is why we rehearse the righteous acts. All right? Come on. They that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Mm. And the door was shut. That's it. That's judgment. That's judgment on Israel. Come on. Verse 11. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Master, Master, open to us. But he answered and said, But don't that sound like the familiar? Mm -hmm. Lord, Lord, yeah. help me, please, help me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he answered yeah. and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Ooh, ooh, I can't imagine that cut. To me, that's got to be the coldest cut in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how should I tell you I don't know you? 
Ooh, ooh, I think I just evaporate. <laughs> I, just, I just, you know those movies where you, you look, they look, and then and it's just, the guts disintegrate. They yeah. look, and then they in shock, yeah. and then they just all, oh, they just yeah. go fade away, away. Yeah. fade away. I believe that's I would have it, but I seen your howl shot. Right. You crack this guy, come down. I'm talking about, I want to get in. And he said, I don't know you, man. Right, right. It's nothing else you can do. It's nothing else you can do, man. Yeah, man. This, right. What's going on here, and for many of us, it's a beautiful thing, because today, we're being taught to fear the most high. That's right. That's right. We got to have this, man. No, I had it. No, no man can serve the most high without the fear. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do it. Right. It's impossible. If you don't have that fear, you're not going to do it. Because we know, those of us that believe, even the Christians know that he created these trees. Even the Christians know that he made the rivers. He made the seas. We know that. We know that he created us. We know we could die anytime and still don't do right. Mm -hmm. That's why you, because you don't have that fear yet. All right? I got a precept. This is Proverbs 15 and 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. And he that hateth reproof shall die. You don't die if you hate it. I mean, I, I love reproof. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And get me sure. That lets me know most I still dealing with me. If he don't tell you nothing, man, something something's going wrong. Mm -hmm. The most high will be telling us more of what we're not doing than what we are doing. That's what he would be doing. He would be correcting us. And we should love it. The Christians, he ain't telling them nothing. They over there, he ain't telling them nothing. He just letting them go. How long are people being Christians? Most I ain't said nothing. <laughs> just let them go ahead with that. How many pork chop sandwiches can a man eat? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we've been I was in there telling lies, <laughs> thinking I'm all right with a daggone king, Alaskan king crab leg <laughs> in my mouth, a giant spider, and thinking I'm all right with the most high. And he hates these abominable foods. Come on, man. Deacon keep coming back to church, and I ain't talking about Deacon Sakar. I'm just talking about the church deacons. Deacons keep coming back to church and slept with the pastor's wife, and he's still in church. Most of I ain't said nothing. He ain't do nothing. They vote the pastor out. Vote the pastor. The deacons run the church. They do. Come on. Verse the deacon board. Come on. Verse 32. He that refuseth instruction. I, I gotta say this again. You wonder <laughs> the deacons run the church and wonder why the church full of women. <laughs> mm, right. Wonder why the church full of women. You in here is different. You're gonna see more men than women. Because the most high is dealing and the women are an intricate part. But we the most high is not into female apotheosis. We don't worship no women. That's right. We worship the most high. Right. Huh? We teach men how to teach their women. It's an order. But in the church, it's back. The women all everywhere, they active, they running around, they hats everywhere, flying around like they're flying saucers, telling people what to do, ushering other men in the aisles and touching their back. I'm like, what the hell is going on up in here? <laughs> <laughs> I have a precept. Bring it up. About fearing the Most High. Uh, yeah. Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of the Most High is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. There you go. You gotta have that fear, man. Or oh, we won't do it. That's the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's the beginning. Uh, precept. Uh, second Timothy. Second Timothy three sixteen. This all scripture is given by inspiration <clears throat> of Yahweh, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You see that. The scripture is there to correct you. So when you do it, you're corrected. That's why you need to do it. Now seek him while he can be found. That's why you, That's why David, he, he didn't delay. He made haste to keep the commandments, man. Come on. He that refuseth instruction, this is verse 32 of Proverbs 15. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. Mm. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. That's right. Yep. And the fear of the Most High is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. So you got to be humble even when receiving it. Mm -hmm. Receiving the instruction with humility. That's why we bow down before Him. And we're showing Him. We're acknowledging Him. 
that hear, we want to hear from you and we're ready to obey. That's what soldiers do. They come before their king, they bow down, and they're they ready to take orders. That's a real soldier. How are you? You insubordinate. Hey, what type of soldier are you? What type of officer are you? <laughs> you ain't listening to nothing that the, the, the king, he gave command. You go take it off down the opposite way. He said, we're going to charge this hill. He, yeah, yeah. You run like, no. I got, well, brother, then you going to get shot with an arrow in the back. <laughs> And that's what we do when we turn away from his instruction. Come on. Matthew 25 and 11. Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Master, Master, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man comes. That's how we got to live. We're not knowing when he comes, but knowing that he's coming. Right. Knowing that he's coming, where you think nobody see you, there he is. You doing what you want to do, there he is. All right. So real quick, I want because I, I want to get through this Deuteronomy nine. Let's go to verse one, mm -hmm. and we're gonna start down. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter nine, verse one. Hear, O Israel, thou art to pass over Jordan this day to go in and possess nations greater and mightier than thyself. Cities great and fenced up, a people great and tall. Deuteronomy 9, verse 2, we're at right now. The children of the Anakins, who thou knowest, and of whom thou hast heard say, Who can stand before the children of Anak? Anak. Now, Anak, Anak or Anak, these were giants, man. These were giants. Uh, give me uh, Numbers 13, 22. And so, when you look at the odds we had to face, when you talk about the challenges that we had as a nation, it was nothing easy. So this, don't think that this is going to be easy. It's not supposed to be easy. Mm -hmm. Because, listen, how can you be proven with your skill if you're not challenged? Okay, if you train in martial arts, you train, you're doing all these trains, you got these degrees, you got to... But you don't know if your degree mean anything based on you go to another school and they doing what you doing, you a fifth degree black belt, the white belt's doing that. All right, they doing that. I know in some arts, the white uh, degree, and you go to some of these other places, that's your fifth degree, well, our white, our white belt will beat your fifth degree black belt based on the teacher and the instructions. We serve the greatest power there is. Mm. Your degree, your, what do you think the degree of challenge is going to be? It's going to be great. Your degree of challenge is going to be great. But if you plan, you ain't been studying, you ain't been doing your forms, so now when you go up and it's time for you to take your <laughs> test, you look like an idiot. Yeah, you about, you about to get wiped up. All right? By somebody that's a, maybe not not really as skilled as you, as you should be. Yeah, Esau. But he defeats you. All right, come on. Verse two. Uh, a people great and tall, the children of the Anakims, whom thou knowest, and of whom thou hast heard say, who can stand before the children of Anak? Go to Numbers 13, 22, so we get a little backdrop. Numbers 13, verse 22. And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai, the children of Attic were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eskol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they buried between two upon the staff. This is talking about the great land that the Most High was giving us. All right, it was, man, clusters of grapes, man, come on. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. I'm drinking pomegranate juice right now. It's a pomegranate, man. This, this is, man, this is nectar to your physical soul, man. Come on. 24. The place was called the Brook Eskol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And when they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh, or Kadesh, and brought back word of them, 
and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Come on. And they told him and said, we came unto the land where thou sent us and surely it floweth with milk and honey. For this is a fruit, for this is the fruit of it. The Most High always was giving us other people's land. <laughs> it's fruitful, it's fruitful, it's their land, but he gave it to, he made the world for our sake. All right, come on. This is Numbers 13, verse 28. Verse 28. But technically, was it their land? No, it's the Most High. The earth is the Most High's in the fullness thereof. And we're his children. So it's all ours. Come on. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. Now you see this? Most High had already instructed them that y'all gonna take the land. These people talking about, they strong. They scared, you know. He's scared. <laughs> He's scared the most high. Your power told you to take the land. I said, do you know you do the same thing when the most high tell you to do something and you don't do it? You scared. You scared. Mm -hmm. Fearful and unbelieving. Faith. No faith. You scared. Come on. Nevertheless, the people are strong that dwell in the land. He said I'm feminine. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and the cities are walled. <laughs> and very great. Now this this is saying we over here and listen, the most high done already showed these people what he did with his stretched out arm, what he did to the Egyptians. Right. And you talking like this? The most high done already let us know that we Israel, amongst all those odds, and you wavering? Come on. Uh, <laughs> and moreover we saw the children of Anak there 29 the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said let us go up at once and possess it look at Caleb he said let's go he ready to go. He got the face. He got the spirit of the Most High on him. Let's take that same spirit David had. Right, that's right. That's the same all the spirit all that Abraham had to leave his kindred and country. Isaac had. And these are who the promises are to. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come on. For we are well able to overcome it. We are well able to come because we always talk about all things are possible. Why are we not overcome? Because you're scared. Mm -hmm. Why are you scared? We'll see. Come on. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. You see that? So there's no excuse. I can't do it. You know how many excuses we come up with? We'll say, look, you need to keep the laws. You know how many excuses you can come up with not to do it? We, we, we can't do it. I can't do it. I got this going on. This going on. Uh, he know my heart. Uh, if this, everything will fall down, man, you scared. You scared. That's what it is. You got an unbelieving heart, hmm. fearful, and you're unbelieving. Most high told you you could take it. You got men that's doing it. Joshua was ready to do it. That's right. Come on. Verse 32. And they brought up an evil report of what type of report? An evil report. Why was the report evil? It was the ones that was giving it that made it an evil report. <laughs> Cause they were scared. Talking about oh, there's giants in the land. Yeah. <laughs> Man, this, we can't do it. They strong, they big over there. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Verse 32. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land, though through which we have gone to search it, is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the 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 and Anak, the giants, the um, the Anakims. Go ahead. The sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. You come from the stock, as we talking about David, mm -hmm. slay giants. That's, right. That's what he do. We're supposed to be giant slayers. There's not supposed to be any obstacle in our way. We're supposed to be able to move mountains. Mm -hmm. But clearly something is stopping us. Come on. <clears throat> the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. See how it was all in their perception. 
You don't have to be scared, beloved, of what man can do to you. Just obey the most high. He gonna bring you through it. You're not gonna lose anything, you're gonna gain. I had to become homeless to realize, to trust the most high keeping the Sabbath. That's right. Are you willing to do the impossible? Do you love the most high that much to do the impossible? Because it won't be you doing it. It won't be, it's him, he's gonna do it for you. But there's something you're gonna have to do that seems impossible to you. The part that I can't, oh man, I, oh, I can't do this. Oh, oh, oh. That's the thing you're gonna have to do. And you're gonna keep taking that test over and over again till you do it. Cause that's how the most high is. He gonna bring you right back to the test you fail if you get to live that long. Mm. He'll bring you right back to the test. Why do you think we keep facing the same things over and over again? That's right. It seems like the same things keep coming. Uh, like that, that wheel, that spinning wheel. <laughs> You know, they used to do it on the Wheel of Fortune. You're supposed to get, like, they try to get the dollar, you end up getting 20. Pull it again, mm, 20 come back. Mm, 20, ah, bah, 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 get out of here. You don't get none. No prize. See you later. That's us. You keep spinning the wheel, man. Playing Russian roulette with the most high. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 2 is where we were at. The book of Deuteronomy 9 and 2. A people great and tall, the children of the Anakins, whom thou knowest, and of whom thou hast heard say, who can stand before the children of Anak? Come on. Verse 3. Understand therefore this day that the most high thy power is he which goeth over before thee. He's the one that's going to conquer your enemies, man. Come on. As a consuming fire. As a what? Consuming fire. Come on. He shall destroy them. He's going to destroy your enemies. You ain't got to worry about that obstacle trying to stop you from keeping the Sabbath. He's going to move that out of your way. Come on. And he shall bring them down before thy face. So shall thou drive them out and destroy them quickly, as the Most High have said unto thee. Come on. Speak not thou in thy heart, after that the Most High thy power has cast them out from before thee, saying, For my righteousness... The Most High have brought me in the possession of this land. You're not here because you're righteous. This is what I was saying before. We're not because we haven't been right. But most of us, what we were doing just a minute ago, that ain't even a blink of the eye in the eyes of the Most High. Was well, just pure evil and wickedness, mm -hmm. myself included. Wicked as hell. Mm -hmm. All right, come on. Brought me in to possess this land. But for the wickedness of these nations. But because of the wickedness of the nations, the nations were so bad. You know what's scary now? We have become more wicked than the nations. <laughs> what do you think's gonna happen to you? Because the most high delivered us because of the wickedness of the nations, a lot of things that we didn't know. But he was looking at us too and said, man, my people are evil too. But you know what? The wickedness of these nations are so bad. I, I'm a, their wickedness is worse. So I'm gonna use them as a whipping post so that my people can learn what not to do. The same thing we do when Esau come out there and we teach. Mm -hmm. The so-called white man, we're beating up on him to teach our people and say, see, you can do this too. And this is who you're not supposed to be like. Mm -hmm. We use them as a whipping post. All right, come on. Verse four. Speak not thou in our heart after that the Most High thy power has cast them out from before thee, saying, For my righteousness the Most High have brought me in to possess this land. But for the wickedness of these nations, Yahweh doth drive them out before thee. Come on. Verse 5. Not for thy righteousness, or for, thy, for the uprightness of thine heart, does thou go to possess their land, but for the wickedness of these nations, the Most High thy power drove, doth drive them out from before thee, and that he may perform the word which Yahweh swore unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is the reason, because of the promise that he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who operated in faith, all right? So it's not because of our righteousness, but this is not an excuse to not do right. This should say we can't afford to do wrong now. You see what I'm saying? Read on, verse 6. Understand, therefore, that the Most High thy power giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness. 
for thou art a stiff-necked people. And we know the scriptures all over that talk about it. Exodus 32, 9, you know, the things that, that we did, again, the golden calf, everything most I gave the commandments. Moses prayed and begged the Heavenly Father, don't, don't destroy these people because, you know, your enemy is going to say you weren't able to deliver these people. You know, but it wasn't because of their righteousness. Mm. It wasn't Moses, it was an intercessor. Just like we have in your shot. That's why you cannot continue to sin because the worst thing gonna come upon you. Mm -hmm. All right? I mean, our people, did our people, did they make it out the wilderness? No. Two people. Two. He destroyed all of us. He could do that to us now, right now. We could be the, the wilderness folk mm -hmm. right now. Huh, let me, I just want to say he is doing that right He is doing it, we see it And that's why judgment started in the house of the Most High first That's why you're seeing the death angel Going through Israel now It's going through Israel The people in Israel are dying mm -hmm. The brothers that know they're Israelites You know It's one thing to die But you want to die for doing right <laughs> You want to make it in You want to make it in I don't want to die for doing wrong Hey, he, he's absolutely correct. And um, let me say this too. The most I don't deal with a bunch of punks, man. Okay, I'm going to tell you that straight up. You know, when you read the stories about Solomon and David and Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, those are the main men of warriors. Guys like Samson. Okay, guys like Ben and I. The most I don't deal with no punks, man. Okay, it's just like if you if you had problems with somebody that lived over there, okay, and you need some backup, you're going to get a brother that's not scared, man. You're going to get a brother that's going to roll with you through thick and thin and he's not scared man all right think about what we do week in and week out when we go out there on the streets and we teach we ain't a bunch of punks man the most i was he's the one that put that spirit in us to go out there without that fear like that we don't look when you get up in the morning on saturdays and you know you got to go out there to camp it's is it's like basically you don't really you don't love your life most I said you can't love your life because you can go out there and you can lose it at any time, man. That's right. Okay? And that's the way that we are. That's the way the most I said he reserved us for last, man. All right? When you go out there, when you speak, man, and know somebody can just murk you at any time, man. One of these old Aryan guys, man. But you you, you so grounded and you're supposed to be so grounded, okay, in the faith of the most high that you know that you've done all you can do until the end. I'd rather die out there on the street like the priest is saying. I'd rather go out there and get murked out there doing it because the most high gonna bring me right back, man. That's a great honor to do that, man. You understand what I'm trying to say? So the most high, the same way these brothers is doing, like, come on, man, you know the most high is with us. That's the same intellect and that's the same non-fear that all of us have when we go out there, man. All right? And that should be your same attitude when it comes to your job. That's right. That's right. Don't be afraid. You'd rather uh, be home. It should be more homeless Israelites. Real talk. I'm just saying what it is. I ain't telling you nothing that I haven't done and not with the most high charge to do. It's better off to be home. I was homeless with four daughters, a wife, and two dogs because I refused to break the Sabbath. But then guess what happened? After I went through that struggle, I got freed. I, I, I didn't have to work no more. Right. And I, and I haven't worked since. And the most I provided for me. I receive money, mm -hmm. but I'm not working. You see what I'm saying? Some things you gotta, to see the impossible, you gotta go through the impossible. You're not gonna see, there's a greater existence than what we've been existing here. He told us to, to build houses, to, to drink the drink. <laughs> right, all praises, to eat the sweet, all praises. Of, of the land. He told us to do these things. You know? <laughs> so, so. Okay, go ahead. All right. Yeah, so these are the things that we, we have to have that same fearlessness when we're facing these obstacles. Because you ain't going to be able to look. You could look. You may not be afraid of fighting this white boy. But if you're afraid to keep the commandments because you fear something gonna happen to your livelihood, then you might as well be afraid of Mr. White Boy. Yeah, that's right. You might, you still, you still scared? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, I got precepts. I'm thinking about this about uh, Second Timothy 1 and 7. For God has not given us the, fear, the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. That's right, it's sound. It's sound to reject. Um, what the enemy is trying to because the enemy is always going to get you to try to break the commandments. 
That's what he does. He wants you to stop keeping the commandments. Uh, unless you're ready. I thought, we talk about you ready to die, but you can't not work to keep the Sabbath. You ain't ready to die. You out there hoping you don't get shot so you could go to work. <laughs> That's what it is. If you're scared of your boss, I don't care what you say. If you're afraid of you, you scared. That's a slave. That's a slave. You slave. The slaves. The slaves would rather work in the field than to take that energy and beat the hell out of the slave master. That's right. <laughs> All right. You swinging that hook. He give you a, a axe hook, a pit. You got a, a one of them uh, holes. You got all types of tools, and you ain't go upside his head. I'm sure somebody did. Somebody had to. They just not talking about. But you would rather work. You got big, muscle bound brothers out there. Lean <laughs> master come by, all out of shape, out of breath. Call him a nigga. Call him a nigga. Can barely get up on the horse, and you don't do nothing. <laughs> you do the same thing today. Right. You do the same thing today. It ain't no different. That's right. You know you're stronger than him. Huh? You know you're smarter than him. He make you do all the work. Mm. He use you up, Dude. and then he, he threaten you to keep your powers instruction. Mm -hmm. Man, we got to stop this. We got to stop. Come on. Verse seven. Remember and forget not. How thou provokest the Most High thy power to wrath in the wilderness. This is what we're supposed to remember. This is for our learning. Why we don't remember this? Oh, you provoked them in the wilderness. Why would you do that again? Somebody please answer me. Why would you do that again? Why would you provoke him again? Why would you provoke him again? Come on. From the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until you came unto this place, you have been rebellious against the Most High. Rebellious against who? The Most High. When you are not doing what he says, you're rebellious against the Most High. It doesn't matter. You can't reason that away. You're, you're rebellious. And just admit it. You need, some of us need to go face the east, turn, pray, say, I've been rebellious That's right. against the Most High. That's right. Forgive me. Strengthen me, and then there's something you got to do. You got to get up from there, and then you got to do the impossible. That's right. Rebellious That's right. Is rebellious, is a, yeah, rebellious is a spirit of witchcraft. That's right. It's death and the scripture says, suffer not a witch to live. I see your hand back there. Go ahead, precept. Okay, precept. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Luke 19, 27. This, uh, Yahweh Shai. But those my enemies which would not that I should reign over them, Bring hither and slay them before me. That's right. Come on. Yeah. You remember what we brought out in the law when we was going over to 613? A rebellious son and prior to that. A rebellious son, what would happen? Death penalty. Death penalty. You bring him before the elders, he's rebellious, he won't listen, he's a glutton, he's a drunkard, and they would stone him to death. That's right. If the kingdom is coming back, the kingdom's supposed to be in you. Is it in you if you're not doing what the kingdom says to do? The kingdom's in us. We're supposed to establish how you're going to be a light unto the world. Hmm. You can't. You're not. You're, you're those ten virgins. They got the lamp with no oil. That's who you are. You're an Israelite with, with no oil. You're, you're an Israelite lamp a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Israelite Sir Lamp a lot, but no oil. <laughs> you ain't like nothing. You ain't, you ain't like nothing. You might as well be that. Well, what's that thing they put out in front of the white man? Used to take him and have in front of them landing the jockeys and black and some sit them right in front of the house. That's you. You ain't doing nothing. You ain't got no light. You just stone. A heart of stone, man. A jigaboo. Oh, That's what it is. <laughs> we don't like that, but we've been jigaboos and, and, cool, and all those things. Why do you think they called us that? Because we was that to the most high. You've been like that. We were traitors, man. We were stiff neck. We were horrible. You can't afford to do that again. Come on. Verse 8. Also in horror. Hey, hey look, y'all beloved. I ain't talking at you. 
I'm talking with you. I'm talking about myself. All of us, man. That's right. All of us, man. Don't think I'm on, on no high. This ain't me. This the most high. Right. This scares me. Right. Right. All right. These messages that he gave me, it shake me up. All right. Come on. Also, in horror, you provoke the most high to wrath. We did that. We provoked them to wrath. Come on. So that the most high was angry with you to have destroyed you. To do what? To have destroyed you. You want the most high to destroy you or your boss saying you fired? Mm. You want the most high to say, I'm ready to destroy you or this half little thing of a man <laughs> to tell you you fired? That you could, if you really want it, you could mush in the face and take his job. That's right, bring it out. Right. Come on, man. You know what? A lot of the things I know, this is a little sidebar, but the most I wants us to be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of us, he wants y'all to stop. He want to get you off of that, man. Do your own, you, and you got to trust him for that. But he want to get you off of that. That's right. That's true. You got a mind. You got a thought. You the living, you the sons and daughters of the living power. That's right, huh? We need to network. We can start paying. I know I'm just a little, I don't want to go on a tangent, but we can do day, daycare right now. We can do we can do healthcare, clothing. We can do that right now amongst us. That's right. And generate money. And then we could uh, inflict usury on the heathen. That's lawful. It's lawful. Make some Make America Great Again shirts and go out there and sell them. <laughs> You'll be rich overnight. Go <laughs> we'll sell them to the heathen. You can do that. That's lawful. And charge them extra. Make sure that Trump look real nice on the front of the, the, the print, the screen print. Make sure he look nice. Sell it to the people. Take the vaccine. They always sell it to Edomites. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, I mean, you can do that. That's y'all. Y'all think I'm playing? It's the truth. It's all types of things we can do. <laughs> now, don't don't do no. You know, I had to thought the most. I had to get it out of my head. But I was thinking about a meth lab. But then I said, I can't do that. <laughs> what say? Oh, 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 oh. No, not that. That's too far. Yeah, we'll go ahead. <laughs> so that the Most High was angry with you to have destroyed you. To destroy you. Can, not, can you not or can you enact usury on the heathen? Of course oh, you can. Yes, sir. Of course you can. But we do it on ourselves. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we charge each other a high price. Mm -hmm. sure. But when the so-called white man, we do the opposite. When he come by, oh, we want his business. So I'm, I'm, you could get this for nothing, sir. <laughs> just come back. I just need to see your face so uh, other people think I got a legitimate business, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Negro, come on. Verse 9. When I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant, which the Most High made with you, then I abode in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. I neither did eat bread nor drink water. This is showing, this is a symbolism of Yahweh Shah and his suffering for us and how patient the Most High is with us. Because the Most High sent his servant. So we had an intercessor in Moses. We have an intercessor now in Yahweh Shah. Come on. And Yahweh delivered unto me two tables of stone written with the finger of the Most High. Written with the finger of the Most High. Come on. And on them was written according to all the words which the Most High, your power, spoke with you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. Verse 11. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days and 40 nights that the Most High gave me two tables of stone, even the table of the covenant. And Yahweh said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from thence, for thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. So the Most High knew that we would corrupt ourselves, but he, he was giving us the law. Before he delivered us out of Egypt, before he could turn around, what are we doing? Come on. They are quickly turned aside out of the way which I commanded them. Mm -hmm. he, you, you quickly turned away. What's causing you to be quickly turned out of the way that the Most High commanded you? Breaking the law. Yeah. But on a personal note, what is it in your way? Is it a golden calf? Mm -hmm. What is it? Come on. At least you could get a little money for that golden calf. You can't get nothing for what, what's in your way. Is that job worth it? No. Read on. They have made them a molten image. Mm. 
Furthermore, Yahweh spoke unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff necked people. Let me alone that I may destroy them. Do what? Destroy them. The most I said, leave me alone, Moses, so that I may destroy them. You don't want that hovering over me. I'd rather have a million drones over my house, ready to fire, than the most high hovering over me, ready to destroy me. Come on. Both body and soul. Come on. And blot out their name from under heaven. Blot out their name from under heaven. I mean, you can be written in the, in the dirt. <laughs> Come on. And I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than that. So I turned and came down from the mount. And the mount burned with fire. And the two tables of the covenant were in my two hands. And I looked and behold, you had sinned against the most high your power. And made you a molten calf. You had turned aside quickly out of the way which the Most High had commanded you. You turn, he commanded you. That whenever he gives us instruction, these laws, he, that's a command. You quickly, how quick are we to turn out the way? Come on. And I took the tables and cast them out of my two hands and broke them before your eyes. And I fell down before the Most High as at the first 40 days and 40 nights. This Moses was like, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. And through the... The stones, he probably, he probably just fell out of his hands. It's just pure shock. Like, what are y'all doing? The Most High just delivered you from the Egyptians. All that destruction. And you ain't fear that he would do that to you? Come on. I did neither eat bread nor drink water because of all your sins which ye sinned. Moses fasted, man, 40 days, 40 nights. Look at the type of strength we had back then. He fast, he didn't drink no water. He said, look, he said, I gotta do this for the people. Look at the type of uh, intercessor he was. Come on. In doing wickedly in the sight of the Most High to provoke him to anger. For I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure wherewith the Most High was wroth against you to destroy you. Come on. But the Most High hearkened unto me at that time also. And Yahweh was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him. He was going to kill Aaron. <laughs> he was going to kill Aaron, the high priest. Say, Aaron, you out of here. And you join in with that madness, I'm going to kill you. You can get it too. Yeah, I thought, oh, it don't sound like he all love. Right. right. It don't matter your position in this. Right. It don't matter your rank. It don't matter who you think you are from heaven. That's right, Aaron. The most I can kill you. Come on. And I prayed for Aaron also the, at the, also the same time. Verse 21. And I took your sin, the calf which you had made, and burnt it with fire, mm. and stamped it, and ground it very small, even until it was small as dust. A lot of us got to do that before the most high. We got to take whatever we made a molten image and that we put before him, and we got to destroy it. We gotta burn it, destroy it. The cross, uh, you know, your computer, if that's stopping you, your right eye, if it offend you. Some of y'all need to come through here with a pencil in your eye. And you still took your right eye out. If it's offensive to you, if you don't wanna do that, then you know you shouldn't be looking at it, right? Or turning away. These are the things, when, you, when you're in your car, when you're by yourself, these are the things that, this is where the rubber meets the road, man. We got to start like yesterday. Come on. Let's make a statement to you. Never by yourself. No. That's what you need to understand. When he said, <laughs> I, I'm always with you. He, he is. He always with you. Come on. And I cast the dust, therefore, into the brook and descended out of the mountain. And at uh, Tabera and to Manasseh or Masai, Salakia. And at Kibroth Hatava, ye provoked the Most High to wrath. Likewise, when the Most High sent you from Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and possess the land which I have given you, then you rebelled against the commandment of the Most High your power. He did it again. And this has been our cycle over and over. So, beloved, do you see why we can't do it? That's right. Why we shouldn't do it? In the end anymore it never went well for israel when they kept doing this and now that we've been returned to him 
That's why it tells us it, that we should seek him 10 times more. That's right. That's right. You gotta go hard That's right. or you ain't going home. Go hard or you ain't going home. They say go hard or go home. Go hard or you ain't going home. You ain't going to inherit the land. Right. Come on. And ye believed him not, nor hearken to his voice. Now you're gonna to have to take the test over again. If you believe in regeneration, reincarnation, you, you're gonna to have to take it again. You're gonna to have to take your test again. That's what it's out. We can keep going, coming, doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Doing the same thing, generation after generation. Come on. And that's why it's a lot, that's why the Most High is visiting the iniquity. He gonna visit you, he meet you there with iniquity before you, like the children that were born into slavery. He was meeting them. He was meeting that generation. Punishment, boom. Punishment, boom. You come out the room, wow, punishment. You you born into punishment. Paul said that we was born into sin. Born into sin. That's right, brother. That's right. Come on. Can I get a priest up on that? Look? Bring it up. Um, Leviticus chapter 18, verse 27. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you. And the land is defiled. Ooh, come on. That the land spew not you out also mm. when ye defile it. And it spewed out the nations that were before you. Look at that's heavy. Look at it. even the land. The land is reacted to your transgression. Mm -hmm. It's spewing you out. That's why I said we don't we don't own anything. The land it, it's just nothing going on. The land don't even want you. <laughs> <laughs> Not unrighteously. Not unrighteously. That's right. We got to show them the most high's righteousness. Again, it's not our righteousness. Ours is filthy rags, but it's his righteousness. Let's do his righteousness. All right, come on. Ye have been rebel. verse 24. Ye have been rebellious against the most high from the day that I knew. Mm, 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 mm. When I read this, I, mean, I read it before, but it just, it just in these times, it just was so sobering because I was like, now I see why like, you can't afford to do this. It's better not to have known him right. than to know him and then and then turn away. Hmm. Because that's rebellion. That's rebellion. And notice rebellion when you do it again over and over and over again. We've been rebellious. So when he said Israel's rebellious, we kept doing it. We kept doing it. You've been rebellious. You, you did it again, you did it again, and you did it again, 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 again. We got to stop. Repeat. You keep repeating. Come on. Verse 25. Thus I fell down before the Most High 40 days and 40 nights. He did it again. We rebelled again, Moses. Went to, what type of intercessor? Who would do that? Which one of us would fall down on our face 40 days and 40 nights for rebellious people, man? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seen do it, go and catch. Just seen the Most High deliver us, kill people for us. Killed the Egyptian firstborn. Did all this miraculous stuff for congealed the water so they were still so we cr mm -hmm. cross on dry land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all we can say before our great and terrible power whose name is set apart is, um, man, I gotta, I, I gotta do this. So you know, I'm sure my lights gonna be cut off. <laughs> huh? Go ahead. You said uh, rebellion, like to keep doing it over. Yeah. The root word of belly is to fight a war against. So man, fighting against the Most High. Look at that over and over again, man. That just, oh, that's scary, bro. You know you're not gonna win that. That's powerful. You can't win that. Right. You have war. It's like we declare war against the Most High mm -hmm. over and over again. Mm. Come on. Ye have been rebellious against the Most High from the day that I knew. Them. Verse twenty-five. Thus I fell down before the Most High forty days and forty nights, as I had fell down at the first, because the Most High had said He would destroy me. Twenty six. I prayed therefore unto the Most High and said, O Yahweh, our power, destroy not thy people and thy inheritance, which thou hast redeemed through thy greatness, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Twenty seven. And this is why we should always acknowledge Him as that power. Whenever you pray, whenever we meditate on him, think of him as the great and terrible power whose name is set apart that brought us out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Come on. 28. 
27. Remember thy servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is a beautiful prayer too, because when you know that, look, what we're getting right now is not necessarily what we deserve. We really all deserve to be dead, right? Every one of us in this room, our whole nation, and then you, we need to accept that fact. So where does that position you now? Humbly. Humbly. <laughs> That's right. Very humbly before and very careful. That's right. You see what I'm saying? So this would cause you not to think more highly of yourself than you than you are. It puts all of us on the same playing field. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody better as far as what you deserve. It ain't, it ain't nothing about your garment right. that makes you better. <laughs> it's something like the most I gonna say. You come in, no, you you just with the regular shirt. No, you don't. No, brother. We all in the same boat. Slave ship right. together. Uh -huh. And we're deserving of the punishment. So every day we need to take it as a kindness from the Most High, see it as a mercy from the Most High, and realize that we should not continue in sin because grace abounds. We shouldn't do it. And we should look on one another everywhere and every chance we see, go and correct that thing. Correct. Wait a minute, brother. Don't think more highly of yourself. You think more highly of yourself when you think it's okay to break his laws. You, you, you're doing too much. You're doing too much. It's not okay, don't make no excuse. You know, call somebody for some help. Bar, you better off borrowing some money, man. I'm telling you. Ask when you're supposed to put some money. But uh, look, I had quit the job. Uh, it was a Sabbath. Look, can y'all give me a little help me, you know, something. I may pay you back after seven years. You know, when Jubilees come. Cause in Jubilees, you, you, you're free from it. But you know, don't think like that, that's wicked. But. What I'm saying is, we need to rely on one another, all right? Even even to help us keep the law. That's right. Moses, man, fasted. Fast twice! 40 days and 40 nights. Whew, come on. Can I make one statement too? They still all died. That's right. They didn't make it. Nobody made it. The most, I was gonna say, the most I still, he didn't clear their guiltiness. He didn't clear him. That's uh, Numbers 14, I think 28 through 37. Come on. That's right. He didn't clear him. Come on. Number 27. Remember thy servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Almost finished. Look not unto the stubbornness of this people, nor to their wickedness, nor to their sin. So this is how we should pray. Don't look. Don't even go to the most high. I did this for you. I did this. Do this for me. Mm -mm. Father, don't destroy me and have mercy and kindness on me because of the promise you made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then you start from there. Then you start keeping these commandments, man. Even if it costs you something. And it's going to cost you something. That's right. It's going to cost you something. Come on. I want to use the precept you gave me. This is uh, Deuteronomy 10 and 17. For the most high your power is the power of powers and the master of masters, a great power, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons nor take it for war. He don't take it for war. So it ain't really nothing you could give him for him to just decide. If he wanted to decide, say, yeah, y'all can I, you went out there, you taught, yeah, you was in the street, yeah, you a few people's converted and stuff like that. Now it don't matter. That's why he said, look, when a man does right, and then he does wrong again. Everything that he does wrong comes right back. That's right. Because your righteousness is filthy. All right? And this is the last one I wanted. Uh, Nehemiah 1, 5 and 6. So th this, this is a food for thought. Hopefully this is life changing. Man. Just like, and it, it'll help some of us to be, to live in conversion, you know. Again, because some of us are not converted. We gotta, you gotta live, spend a day in conversion. A day with the Most High is a thousand years. We don't even have a day in conversion as a nation, a lot of us, a, a lot of Most High's people. Come on. The book of Nehemiah, chapter one and verse five. Can you imagine serving the Most High, his people for a thousand years? You're serving him, doing exactly what he tell you to do. As a whole nation. I don't think that's ever been done. Well, we were right with the most high for a thousand years. Come on.
and said, I beseech thee, O Yahweh, our power of heaven, the great and terrible power. The what? Great and terrible power. Read on. That keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Verse, Verse 6. Let thy ear now be attentive and my eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants. For the children of Israel. And that's, you know, I, when I read that, I said, I'm going to start acknowledging him as the great and terrible power, mm. whose name is set apart by Shema Mashiach Yahushua. That's, that's the whole thing. <laughs> that, that's that fear. That fear come in you. You know, you can't bow before the great and terrible power. You know, and this is the power that could destroy you and that know that he, he wanted to. And, the, and by all intents and purposes, if it was us, he, you know, he should have, but he didn't. That means you don't have no time to do what you want. And with that, I say shalom.